Good day everyone, it's me again Mr. Ramsey and welcome to the week 6 of our online class. So the topic that we'll have today is about separating solutions. Again, separating solutions. Repeat after me. Separating solutions. Before we proceed with our topic, let us review first the topic that we have last week. So we have here acetic acid. An example of an acetic acid is your vinegar. Hydrochloric acid is um, the one that you use to clean your bathroom or your toilet. The next one is ascorbic acid. This is vitamin C, like your saline. Okay, and uh, the next one is ammonia. Ammonia is used to make a fertilizer and uh, uh, glass cleaner. These are the vocabularies that we are going to use for this topic. Number one is filtration. Again, filtration. So, repeat after me. Filtration. Spell the word filtration. F-I-L-T-R-A-T-I-O-N. Filtration. Next one is distillation. S spelling of distillation. D-I-S-T-I-L-L-A-T-I-O-N. Distillation. Next, repeat after me. Magnetic separation again magnetic separation spell the word magnetic separation magnetic m a g n e t i c magnetic separation c e p a r a t i o n separation magnetic separation next chromatography again chromatography Chromatography. Spell the word chromatography. C H R O M A T O G R A P H Y. Chromatography. Next one is extraction. Spell the word extraction. E X T R A C T I O N. Extraction. So the topic that we have today is about separation of solutions and mixtures. So as we all know, the solutions are homogeneous, meaning their parts are fully mixed and have very similar properties. That's what you call your homogeneous. So this means that they can be very hard to separate. Uh, a homogeneous uh, uh, solution is it's very hard to separate because they are fully mixed already and uh, they have very similar properties. So, how can we separate solution? So, as we all know, solution is composed of a solute and a solvent. Again, solution is composed of a solute and a solution and a solvent. Okay, so how do we separate solute and solvent? So, the most common method is to make the solute or solvent change their state, whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas, so it can be removed in a Solution. So one way to use this is by uh, putting heat or fire. Okay, so as we can see here, the salt solution. So in order to to separate uh, water from um, sodium chloride from the solid, uh, we have to heat this so that after heating, only the salt residue will remain. And the water will evaporate so that's how you what's one 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 an example of how can we separate solution here we have it uh, this one is what you call your um, distillation okay so this one is the distillation distillation process of how can we separate sol uh, solute and solvent or solution from another solution so how do we separate substances so what are the methods of separation so there are two uh, common use how to separate substances these are solid to solid separation and solid to liquid separation so one uh, example of this is this one so as you can see here this iron fillings with sand so you can separate the iron fillings from sand by using magnet we'll discuss this later and solid by liquid 
uh, we have here the filter paper so that we can separate the solid uh, the solid residue or the solid uh, particles from the liquid particles okay we'll discuss this later so the number one method that we're going to uh, uh, discuss is about filtration again filtration repeat after me filtration so spell the word filtration again f-i-l-t-r-a-t-i-o-n so what is filtration so filtration is used to separate solids from liquids or gases using the filter paper that allows the fluid or the liquid to pass through but not the solid okay so again the filtration is used to separate solids from liquids or gases what do you what do you use to to separate the filter paper because this filter paper allows the fluid to pass through but not the solid solid particles okay so in filtration these are the materials that you're going to need so your filter paper this one is the filter paper then next one is your beaker if you have no conical flask you can also use another beaker next is your funnel this is the Y um, the muddy water which is inside your beaker okay so these are the following materials that you're going to need for your filtration process so these are the direction on how to do the step-by-step -step process of filtrating um, muddy water or your filtration of the muddy water so direction so number one add some muddy water to the first empty beaker and steer so you have here this beaker so you have to add um, muddy water in it on it okay so after that you steer the beaker okay steer the, mud, the muddy water in the beaker then next one is place the funnel with the filter paper in with the second empty plus below so here you have your funnel after that you put your filter paper inside that funnel and then put that funnel in your conical flask or your beaker if you have no conical flask you have your beaker after that pour the muddy water into the funnel with the filter paper so after that number th number three or the third step you pour that muddy water into the funnel with the filter paper so and then after that you record your observation so what will be the result or what will be your observation so during filtration the solid part of the mixture which is the mud or your soil remain in the filter so in the filter paper so you can see here so as you pour the the, the solution or your muddy water into the the beaker which is which have a filter which has a filter okay you can see here the mud that is um, filtered okay and this insoluble solids which is the mud okay or the soil that remain in the filter paper is called your residues okay or residue Okay, so this residues here, this one is what you call your residues. This is the mud that uh, is filtered by your filter paper. Okay, it's what you call your residues. And the water, the liquid that passes through the filter paper is what you call your filtrate. So when you pour, pour down the, the muddy water into the, the funnel with filter paper, so we have here the residue and the water that... Uh, pass through your filter paper is what you call your fill tray okay again fill tray so the water that comes or that passes through your filter paper is what you call your fill tray and this solid part here is what you call your residue again water that uh, passes through is your what you call your fill tray okay number two uh, means of separation or separating substances is what you call your magnetic separation again magnetic separation so how do we use magnetic separation 
an iron powder can be separated by the use of a magnet. Again, an iron powder can be separated by the use of magnet. So as you can see here, uh, we have uh, the iron, um, iron powder and we have here the sand. So we can separate the iron powder from the sand by using a magnetic separation or with the use of your magnet. So the next one is extraction by solvent. So as we all know that solvent is um, the, the, the one that is referred as uh, uh, sometimes is water. So water is considered as a universal solvent. So extraction involves transferring a solute from one solvent into another based on the solubility. What do you mean by solubility? So solubility is a measure of how much a solute can dissolve in a solvent. For this extraction by solvent, um, we can, you have this, uh, I have this video attached on how did this happen. So please watch this video. For additional information about the topic, please view the video attached in your materials of your Google Classroom. Please answer the quiz attached in the assignment or your quiz assignment of the Google Classroom. Thank you everyone and hope to see you soon. Bye!